Do you buy in a limited company or personal names when you're looking at buy to let properties? I get this question all the time and I thought we'll give you some information around some of the reasons others are looking to go down a different route, some of the things to think about. It's not as straightforward. Um, some of the differences between the products, some of the big points that you need to really consider, some of the hidden costs involved. So I thought I'd give this information out there to you guys so you're better informed when you're dealing with brokers like myself, um, that you know, you've got all the information at hand there and you can make an informed decision. Uh, if you do like these videos, you can really help the channel by just liking and subscribing and just making a comment. That's all I want from you. This information is free. You can use me. You can use lots of other brokers out there. If you have enjoyed it, just let me know about it. Thank you so much. And one more thing, guys. I don't know why, but I've reviewed this video that you're going to watch. And the amount of times I say okay is unbelievable. So apologies in advance. I don't know why I say okay after every word. So I know it's annoying. Now I've put you to it, you will notice it. So apologies in advance. Take care. Let's talk about limited company versus uh, personal name buy to let mortgages. Um, you know, I've, I've done many videos on this uh, on the buy to let subject, um, whether you buy in a personal name or whether you buy in a limited company format. Um, we are getting more and more inquiries on these uh, type of transactions. Um, and really, this video is to just break down where you sit in terms of um, where different clients are, are coming from when they when they're looking to opt for a relevant mortgage. Um, so basically, the question that I get asked all the time is, should I go for a limited company mortgage or should I do it in my personal names plan? And I sort of do refer accountant, tax advisor. You need to go and have that discussion with them because obviously they will know your financial position. I think from your own perspective, it really comes down to where you are in your life, where you are in your journey and your property journey. So I'll give you an example. If you're someone who's looking to um, you know, get into property for the first time, um, a lot of those people tend to opt for their first one or two maybe in personal names, okay? However, um, there are some that say, look, I wanna buy five in the next year. And then, you know, I, I really do uh, emphasize that you need to speak to a tax advisor because it depends. For example, you could be a higher rate taxpayer, okay? Um, and uh, maybe have a couple of buy to lets already, but well, you're in a different trajectory to someone who is on 20K a year, basic rate taxpayer, buying their first buy to let, and guess what, the buy to let's only gonna be about 100K, okay? Because that all has an impact on your tax position, okay? So it's not as straightforward as, hi, am, what do you think, okay? One, I'm not qualified to give that advice, okay? Two, it's so much, it's so different. I'll give you an example. You may even, you, you've got two people, same situation, they earn the same money, They've got to buy the same level of properties, okay? But one of them may be better off going into a limited company than the other, okay? Uh, and that could be for, for lots of reasons. So like I said, what are they looking to do with, with their portfolio, with their property journey, okay? Are they looking to expand it? Um, what are they looking to do? What sort of values are there on those properties, okay? It's not just about, you know, um, you know, there's a big difference between the rental generated from one type of property than another type of property. Is it going to be a HMO? Is it going to be a multi-let property? Is it going to generate a lot of income that's going to fall within your tax bracket? Okay? So those are the things. What are you thinking of doing? Where are you? What age are you? You know, how old you are? Okay? That can have an impact in your estate planning. Okay? So please um, do not ask a mortgage broker what you should do when it comes to uh, you know, structuring your uh, portfolio, I, su I suppose, okay? And if, if there is a mortgage broker out there that's giving you that advice, they really should not be doing that, okay? They're certainly not qualified to do so. And many accountants actually don't want to get involved with it, okay? So you really need to speak to someone who deals with property tax, okay? So that's the first point. The second point is, what's the difference between a buy-to-let uh, product uh, on a limited company and personal names, right? So in, in, in actual fact, basically there's very little difference in terms of um, the structure of the product itself, okay? So the way it works is um, generally uh, personal name products are a lot cheaper, okay? So um, product-wise, you know, you're looking probably on a limited company product, maybe 1% higher 
uh, or one and a bit percent higher than a normal buy to let product okay um, so but okay you could say well I can live with that however you've got to bear in mind that and these are just generalizing things okay um, they're also uh, a normal buy to let product comes with like a 999 pound fee or 1500 pound fee okay flat fee on a buy to let on personal names what you will find is buy to let limited company type of products in general come with a percentage fee so one percent one and a half percent two percent of the loan amount so that has a big bearing on um, which product we select um, you know the overall of uh, the overall cost of the product okay because you know if you're putting if you're buying a property for I don't know five hundred thousand pounds and you've got a three hundred thousand pound mortgage on it two percent on three hundred thousand pounds that's a lot of money okay whereas you know you could probably get a 995 pound fixed fee with a normal standard personal name lender okay so those are the big factors within that what you will also find there are a little bit of hidden cost in in the buy to let with limited company what you will find is the legal fees generally tend to be more expensive than uh, than a normal personal name now um, when you go for a, a mortgage or a remortgage you essentially and I get this question quite a bit so I'm going to clarify it now you essentially pay your own legal fees but you're also paying for the lender lenders part of the legal fees as well so you may have to pay your own and you normally get a quote and then you also have to pay for the um, for the lenders solicitors or the legal cost now often when you're doing residential mortgages or quite a lot of personal name buy to let mortgages you get free valuation free legals okay so essentially it's a free valuation you don't have to pay for your own legal fees and you don't have to pay for the lenders as part of the legal fees but it's a little bit less common in when you're dealing within the limited company arena so you've got those costs to think about not only you have gotta pay your cost there are some fees free deals that are coming through and there are some out there but you know the norm is uh, at the moment that you're having to pay both fees so what happens is you've got to take that into consideration you've got the high cost of the product itself the the pleasure of them lending their money to you um, you've also got the fact that um, you know associated costs are more expensive okay so what you will find is we as a broker we'll normally weigh that up with a with the with the client and say look if you are going to go down this road, why would you want to do a two-year fixed? If you're stacking it up to 75% loan to value, you don't really want to come back in two years' time and refinance because there's not much to refinance. Why would you want to pay another you know, bunch of fees again? Uh, unless you are looking to sell or do something, generally a lot of people are saying, right, Prime, I want to go for a five-year fix. Yes, I'll bite the bullet, pay all the fees, especially if it's in London, I'll buy the bullet. So why are people biting the bullet and, and doing this limited company thing, okay? If it's all bad, it's all expensive, you know, the rates are higher, the fees are higher, the legal costs are higher, maybe the survey fees are higher. Why, okay? And it comes down to two folds, okay? Number one is rental calculation. The way lenders are calculating the rent to get the maximum loan are a little bit more lenient okay so the way they will work out uh, the rental especially if it's a property around the south okay where rental yields are quite low at the moment values of property are high loan amounts required are high so it just means you can borrow more okay if you go down the limited company route in most cases you know uh, don't you know don't hold me don't start writing comments and saying well such and such lender can do it but in general they're more generous around the rental calculation so that's one reason okay the second reason obviously is around the interest relief uh, that you could get from a taxation perspective so the money coming in uh, where it, it's it's generally just uh, uh, it's limited to uh, you know your 20 percent if you are a um, uh, if you're a lower rate taxpayer okay so uh, and you know that's that has a big impact on someone who is looking to build a portfolio for example okay or has got quite high value properties and is looking to to push on okay so those those are the two main reasons why people are buying in limited companies so the moral of the story is the question of you know do I buy in personal names or do I buy in a limited company is not a straightforward one um, it really comes down to your own circumstances uh, to try to figure that out you speak to your tax advisor 
And then you speak to a good broker who will who understands this market, who understands where you're coming, where you're going, uh, and can give you that advice. Hopefully you found this useful, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.